Today you're on top of my camera for two wedding days of photo and highlight video hybrid coverage at the same time. Come with me, see how you can do it, then we're gonna make a pizza. I'm kidding, there's still no pizza. Taylor Jackson. Shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community, you're an amazing photographer. Just gonna jump in here for a quick second. Today on Patreon, I've actually uploaded a full financial breakdown of my wedding photography business. That includes how many couples go with hybrid coverage versus regular coverage and the average cost per each of those packages. Not only does it make you more money as a photographer and it is a way to differentiate yourself from every other photographer in your city, it also makes your couples way happier. I find that when my couples book a video package at the very last minute, they are incredibly thankful that they did. I don't wanna convince you of the full value of video here in this video, but it is an important thing to get into, I believe, and I do believe that this is the way that the industry is heading. Also in my Patreon, there's a full breakdown of my pricing list, which means um, line by line, we basically just go through my pricing document and uh, talk about everything as far as hybrid photography goes. Um, also, there's my email scripts in there as well. So lots of, lots of content. I truly do believe that it is the best value in wedding photography education. And it's a lot of things that you're not going to find out there on the internet world. There's also a full money back guarantee. So if you spend your $10 and you're not happy, just let me know. Um, and I'm happy to send your money back, but give it a shot if you're interested in growing your wedding photography business. Now to the video. I have a tip before we even get into this. If you're thinking of getting a DJI Mavic, I recommend getting a Mavic Air or a Spark because the image quality is a lot better. You don't have to really clean it up in post and always be taking images with it as well. It's something that I forgot for like two years of my life and I just pulled stills from 4K. Um, there's gonna be a lot of information coming at you really fast in this video because it is two wedding days and we're doing hybrid coverage and there's really a lot going on. In every circumstance that I find myself in, I'm always looking to get five video shots because if you miss um, getting that proper coverage, unfortunately it really does impact your highlight reel. For the most part, I shoot very similar from my photo and video looks. Um, I shoot a lot more candid moments, I would say, with uh, video and then a lot more uh, more posed moments uh, like family photos, that type of thing, um, always in photography only. Um, I usually don't even do any video coverage of the actual like family formal session other than candid. So this is our first look. Um, the wedding planner is, she's orchestrating something. Um, Tim is off to my right, hiding kind of in the bushes behind the... Uh, the bench here. Uh, you'll see his shot in a second, but um, always be in charge of your own first looks if you can, because this was uh, a bit of a challenge to do that we're both doing photo and video. And I I could realistically do this style of coverage on my own, but it is much easier to do with somebody else that kind of at least is either a strong photographer or a strong uh, videographer. So at this wedding here, this is the uh, this is the Saturday wedding. Tim is very strong at video, so I rely a little bit more on him to do video clips. And the next day, um, or the Friday before, I'm with Nova, who is a very, very strong photographer, um, but doesn't really have as much experience video-wise. So I kind of tailor my approach and my wedding day to whoever I'm working with, um, because I know that they can fill in holes um, and gaps in coverage that maybe I'm missing, and I kind of just utilize my second photographer as best as I possibly can. I'm always using stabilized lenses when I'm shooting video. That means either the Tamron 35, the 85, or the 7200. I love the 7200 for the look and feel it gives all of the images. They're all incredible. Um, so these are all my photos um, from the first look moment there. Um, and then some of the video coverage that we shot kind of arriving. As you can see, it's a little bit different. This is a little more straight out of camera than my edits are. Um, and this was Tim's angle hiding kind of in the in the bushes there. But for the most part, like things with the exception of a few elements, like a first kiss, that if you, you can get enough coverage from around the moment and not actually capture the specific moment. So say you're alone and you're doing a first look and you have to get photo and video coverage of it. I would be primarily shooting photography. I'm there as number one as a photographer. Um, so I would shoot that moment as fast as I could. And as soon as I knew that I had it, I'd flip to video and I'd get that. So always photography first, video second. Video can be more candid moments anyways. I'm just gonna grab some details um, up here because I don't know how this day is gonna shake out. And now we're gonna time travel to Friday. So again, anytime that you can see my ISO in the bottom right hand corner of my LCD there, um, I'm doing video uh, and I kind of shoot it the same way that I shoot photography is that I'm just kind of capturing as many kind of candid moments as I can and I'll do photo coverage of the room and then I'll go through and do video coverage and I pretty much just want one good shot of everybody smiling, everybody being happy. Back to Saturday, uh, everything is a lot easier this day because it is overcast uh, and also not raining, which is kind of the best photography uh, conditions for me at least. And I'm just kind of going around the room. I rely a lot on my 7200 when I'm doing this dual style of coverage because the VR, the 
image stabilization in the lens is so incredible. It's I would say it's at least on par with a Sony body with five point in body stabilization plus um, in optimized lens as well that you're able to just um, kind of handhold everything all day. I don't use monopods. I don't use any sort of stabilizers. It's just uh, all day handheld photography video back and forth. And again, because everybody is in good light right here, I'm doing as many candidates as I possibly can because I want to make sure that I deliver at least one good shot of every person that's come to the wedding, specifically one or like five good shots of every single parent member, everybody in the front row. When everyone's coming down the aisle, I usually focus on the parents and then I'll kind of skip some of the bridesmaids for video and get the maid of honor or um, maybe the safety net in case there's two maids of honor um, that I get the two last girls that come down the aisle. Um, other than that, I'm shooting photography coverage of that moment because um, it's a bit weird to just like cut a bunch of people kind of walking down the aisle back to back to back. It doesn't really work out unless you have multiple cameras kind of set up that you can cut in between. Otherwise, it's just weird to be like cutting into the same frame. It's kind of jump cutty, which is fine when I'm doing YouTube content, but for um, actual deliverables for my couple, I would much rather um, be able to hide kind of all those jump cuts within the video and make it feel a lot more fluid, a lot more uh, professional. You'll notice that I shoot primarily uh, when I'm shooting photo video coverage. I Most of the time I'm shooting horizontal. There's a few different occasions when I will do verticals and that is usually when the girls are coming down the aisle because I want that full body shot. Also within this video you're probably going to see a few weird crops, uh, feet cut out, like heads cut off, things like that. And that's because I'm kind of scaling everything to this 16 by 9 frame. Um, so just please disregard any of those that you see. Because it's cloudy today, it's very easy for me to kind of zoom in and get the video shot that I need way at the far end of the aisle and then switch to photography coverage as they come closer to me. Um, I also kind of switch it up so sometimes I'll get the, the photos from far away and then um, get the video coverage closer up just so that, again, I'm not cutting back to that like same shot of everyone coming down the aisle. And same thing I've mentioned a few times, I always try to get details like that flower shot in the actual wild of the wedding day rather than just kind of staging it on a chair or something like that. It feels more authentic, it feels more real, um, and it's actually kind of a moment within the wedding day. All right, back to Friday, sunny, a um, little bit more challenging, but they left the roof closed, which made this all in really, really fantastic light, so I'm quite happy about that. Also, all the video coverage that you're seeing, uh, like this right here, is all straight out of camera. I shoot with the shade white balance pretty much all the time, uh, the shade white balance. Um, the house with the little lines beside it, um, because I really like those rich, warm tones, and I think that they complement skin tones, um, usually the best. So that's um, why it looks like this. And I kind of touched on this uh, in my why I shoot JPEG, uh, sometimes for engagement sessions and family shoots, and that is pretty much because you have to when you're shooting video there's a lot less latitude you, you could shoot raw video but it's like a gigabyte every eight seconds or something um, so if you can get everything exactly right in camera one you're going to uh, have a much shorter time editing because you don't really need to do any color correction other than maybe just like a general adjustment layer but two you're going to preserve as much quality as you possibly can with the video I find that um, with Nikon specifically as soon as you start doing any sort of difficult color corrections or um, exposure bumps or anything like that you really start to lose quality and saturation um, very quickly if you're shooting Sony you have a little bit more latitude with it but for Nikon Canon shooters um, unfortunately we don't have uh, all of the technology that we need to kind of properly color correct in the field like this so shoot it as right as you possibly can in camera um, that is kind of my my life I guess suggestion for you and by shooting video coverage like this you also kind of really amplify your manual skills in photography as well because when you get back and you uh, get into the editing room that if everything's pretty much like 90% of the way ready to go um, your wedding edit's going to be like an hour and a half something like that rather than like six or 12 or 40 hours or however long um, I, I spent on wedding edits when I was first getting started. Uh, I started before Lightroom, so my life was importing everything into Photoshop and processing one by one, which is not a strategy I would recommend for this day and age. It's, uh, it's quite cumbersome, quite slow, and uh, a lot less consistent than Lightroom is now. All of these images are processed with my preset pack. They're available in the description if you're interested. Um, for the most part, I shoot everything and I have to bump the exposure just a little bit. Um, and at that point, my preset, my pe people preset is like pretty much bang on for everything, um, especially everything that you've been seeing today. So back to the open roof uh, in the shade. And 
Again, I know that I have Tim with me, so I'm shooting a little bit more heavy on the photo side right now um, because I know that he's getting video coverage from somewhere over my left-hand shoulder here um, that I am 100% going to be able to use and I have 100% trust in him. This is usually the time that I get close-up shots because I feel comfortable being up here uh, right now. So I get my photos, my videos, and I make sure that I have one kind of of the bride and groom looking at each other and maybe the groom cracking a smile, something like that. Um, and then I flip over to the bride's side. So here are some samples, um, again, like just straight out of camera, um, regular clips, building all the pieces that I need to eventually create this highlight film that will probably be somewhere between um, three to four minutes in length total. One criticism I get online is that other photographers think that by doing photo video dual coverage, you're actually sacrificing the quality of your photography coverage. In my case, all of my couples that book photo video coverage actually are in the place where they probably aren't going to be hiring a full video team to come in to create that masterpiece of a video. So they are much happier to just have me do both. And I think by doing both photo and video coverage, I am doing a way better job of telling the wedding day story than I would be if I just did photography only. I think that video in general is the best way to relive the day. and. I think photography is great and um, it, like capturing all the key moments is super important, but I think that video is how you relive your day and if you're able to do both, I think that you will excel as both uh, a photographer and also in bookings because people actually um, are slowly be turning the page and they're slowly wanting video coverage again. Um, it's still a bit of a struggle and I know that for the video guys that I work with from time to time, um, video is seen very much as an extra. Whereas if you're a photographer and you can kind of bundle some small video coverage in with your photography, it is going to be much uh, easier so to sell. I'm going to have you guys kind of in the center here, and then I'm just going to put everybody around you so you guys won't have yeah, to move great. too much. All right, looks good. And everybody have a look over here towards me. Today we're lucky. It's cloudy. Very easy to do these big family group shots. I'm actually shooting at f5.6, which is not something I do, but multiple layers of people. And got to keep everyone in focus. I use the 7200 at this point because I like to be able to zoom around elements in the background rather than photoshopping them out or moving them. Um, I just find the versatility in this circumstance is a lot better. Could maybe two of the girls come to the other side just to kind of balance it out? Yeah, and Ava, you're in. Perfect. Uh, hold your flowers down like a little bit lower. That's good there. These are all my safe shots just in case it starts to rain. That way we have kind of everything that I need to at least um, tell the proper story of their wedding day um, and get them all those key shots. Again, when all the family members and all the key individuals are around, I'm always shooting candidates, especially when I'm in good light. And today is also good light right now in this specific direction, always shooting into the sun so that you get that nice warm kind of wraparound halo and stay away from the, the bad sun on people's faces. I had to rotate a little bit weird over here to get the sun on their backs, uh, but it worked out super well. I did all the family photos in that spot as well. Interview with Nova on the golf cart. Oh, hello, Taylor. How are you doing today? We're loving it. It's got a breeze. Feel good. Dressed really awesome today. <laughs> all black. Perfect. And if you guys all want to kind of angle yourselves in kind of towards the center. Get that 45 degree angle Yeah. Going. Perfect. And then same deal, just like get really close and uncomfortably closer. Oh yeah. All right, looks good. Perfect. And I'm only going to make you do this one more time, but can you all talk to each other and laugh about something for no reason? Last time. Thank you. Wedding party wants to hop out here just for a second. I'm just going to do a few while you're here so you don't have to walk. All right. That's great. If you guys want to give each other a kiss for one. Perfect. And can I have you guys holding hands and act like you're about to walk, but you don't actually have to walk. I don't want you to... Perfect. And you can kind of look at each other and just smile at each other. Awesome. I shoot a lot of frames because I'm looking for those like microseconds of candid moments kind of in between the moments that I'm posing. You guys want to turn around and sit like exactly what you just did, just come back towards us. Perfect. And if you guys want to kiss one more time. For the most part, the photography session, I'm just doing photography. Um, I will do a few kind of video clips of the couple, but for the most part, if I'm posing something, um, this doesn't really find its way into the wedding video too often. I'm really relying on those candid moments to build the highlight video. Also, one thing I love that Tim does is he'll walk around the uh, or the cocktail hour and he'll just get groups of people just like together and pose. And it's not something that I'm comfortable doing as a very introverted person. Um, and he loves it and he gets basically everybody in a group shot that's at cocktail hour um, and maybe it seems a little traditional but I think that they're nice to haves and as somebody that's recently been married it is very very nice to have that style of coverage um, just to just to have those images 
So for first dance, uh, very, very favorable conditions with the exception of the fact that the sun's setting and kind of touching their backs from time to time. And I'm circling the dance floor uh, and I'm hopping into DX mode quite a lot uh, for video just to get a little bit closer than I would have with the 85. Um, and very easy, very good lighting conditions in here. Very happy. So I'm going to have you guys just kind of take a walk up this way here. We've got some photo bombers. Just rotate around the photo bomb. I thought I was getting pretty good shots from over here. Um, Nova off to the left actually got, I think, the best shot um, from this session. I got a lot of coverage as far as videos and photos go to actually insert into the um, final video as well as the gallery, obviously. But she got kind of, I would say, the number one photo from uh, that angle. So props to All Nova. Right, so we're going to head over. Um, I guess we can kind of go through here. I like the little light coming off the loading dock, even though it's uh, a loading dock. I think it'll look good. So I know it'll be a bit weird, but if you're right at the top there, and then the background should be out of focus and it should look really nice. So um, yeah, just like right in the center, it'll just be silhouetted. Um, so if you guys want to face each other and get really close, it doesn't really matter what you entirely do with your faces because it'll be a silhouette. After that, we headed out to the golf course and I did a double exposure that I blended in my camera and I was fortunate enough to get a very clear night and to get some pretty crazy looking stars. So very happy with that image and uh, thanks for watching today. Maybe accept this video as kind of a primer to show that yes, photo video hybrid coverage is actually possible in the, the busyness of a wedding day and it's actually a lot of fun. I think the entire industry is shifting to do um, or at least make room for a role like this that they don't want to hire a full video team that's not in the budget, but they are willing to kind of sacrifice a little bit more money in order to get a little bit better coverage from their photographer. Again, all of my financials are in Patreon right now. So if you hop over there, you're able to actually see um, one, you're able to see my full pricing document as well. It's a half hour walkthrough of kind of how I do everything for dual hybrid coverage, as well as a full financial breakdown of kind of the percentages of my couples that actually go with photography video coverage uh, versus just traditional photography coverage these days. So come over to Patreon if that intrigues you. It's $10 a month, which I think is incredibly reasonable. It even has has like my email scripts, uh, a bunch of different, lots of different things uh, that can really help your photography business. So see you over there. Um, if not, then that's fine too. Bye. It's over.